Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So sorry for the late upload. I was in California with my girlfriend and I just got back to Maryland. So please bear with me. Today, we'll be talking about how to build confidence as an Asian male in 2022 or just a male in general. You don't have to be Asian to find value in what I'm going to say, but I'm going to try to specify or cater things towards that because that's I'm an Asian guy, right? And that's kind of like my whole target audience right now. But if you are black, white, whatever race, and you can find some genuine value from this, that's amazing. And I do want to say, this doesn't really apply to specifically Asian men, it just talks about men in general, young adults, and I hope you guys find some value. Developing confidence at a young age is kind of difficult, right? I'm 24 years old, and thankfully I have a good job, I'm well-spoken, I'm educated, and I have this core belief of who I am. And I'd say my development towards confidence in life stems from a traumatic past. I grew up as an immigrant coming to this country. I grew up homeless, you know, domestic abuse. My dad, you know, beat my mom, all this crazy stuff. So I've seen some like crazy shit very early on and I'm not trying to be too graphic, but that is what happened in my life, right? And I've come out of it. I can make a video about that, how I came out from homelessness going forward, but I'll just leave that out there. When you see a lot of stuff, you grow up very, very fast. And I guess that's how I kind of develop things, right? I had to become my own father. My father left and I had to become the man of the house. I had to learn to, to provide for my family very early on. And this comes from like a chip on your shoulder, right? Having this chip on your shoulder makes you develop and you want more. You just wanna take care of others. You don't really have a childhood. Your childhood is robbed from you. So looking back, what insights have I found that I think anyone else can apply? I think belief in yourself comes from experiences and challenges. I think putting yourself in challenging situations and overcoming adversity is a great way to develop core confidence because it's not pretty, it's gonna challenge you, you're gonna cry, you're gonna doubt yourself, and through the self-doubt, you'll find your inner voice to listen to. And the thing is, you're gonna fall down and things won't be perfect. And you'll be okay with instability. That's what it means to be a man, right? Stay true, stay to your grounding, Stay true to your heart, stay true to the situation and pray to God, to the universe, whatever you believe in, that things will work out. That belief in yourself that no matter what happens, I will be okay. But this only comes from putting yourself in challenging situations, guys. So like, if you're just comfortable all the time, I don't think you can really develop confidence. When everything is going amazing in your life, super easy to be confident because that's fake. That's external. Think about it. if you're sleeping well, you're healthy, you're awake, everything's perfect, you're financially set, of course it's super easy to be confident. Of course you can walk up to any single girl or just in life to your boss and be like, hey, I have big dick energy, blah, 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 nah, that's a joke. The speaking your mind out comes from a stable background. But I think the number one thing I think to develop the core of confidence is, hey, look, start putting yourself in kind of stressful situations that kind of benefit your life. The things that we do the least provide the most. I think Greg Platt, Plitt said that. So whatever endeavor that is, right? Let's say you want to get back in shape. You want to make more money. You want to develop social skills. You want to do public speaking. You want to try a new hobby or sport or instrument, but you've never been able to do that. I think that's okay. Go and try those things and fail. I think one thing that helped me develop core confidence was just working out. Working out was the number one thing because it's so physically painful. When you start, first of all, you you don't know what you're going to do, but the more you work out, the more painful it gets. And trust me, the first month or two of just working out, you're just in pain. All that lactic acid and just the development of muscle, it's it's super stressful in your body. You're just always in pain. And you wake up, you got to show up again, and you have all these calluses on your hands, and you got to show up and lift these weights again. That is painful. Showing up to consistency and having discipline is what carries you through to become successful. It's not like you put in work in the gym one day and then you're all of a sudden successful. Success doesn't work like that. You show up on the days you're not supposed to or you don't want to. You know, you're tired, you're sleepy, you're kind of feeling a little nauseous, but you show up anyway. Some days the workout won't be great, but some days the workout will be amazing. But over time through these habits and discipline, you get in shape, your muscle, your body starts developing muscle, muscle mass and you just look pretty damn great. And the thing is, I found out through working out, my confidence has skyrocketed. Because when you look good, feel good, you just are good. And you're used to pain. You're not afraid of stressful situations. So I think by going to the gym, is working out. It's kind of uncomfortable. You find pain, but you find joy in that pain because of the endorphin rush, right? You get addicted to that pain. I realize when I work out the most, I'm not afraid of any other situation in my life. I'm not afraid of talking to a girl, going for what I want, speaking up for promotion. Or try a new skill and hobby, I'm not afraid to fail because I believe in myself, right? I'm not saying I don't get nervous, but I'm not really scared. I'm nervous, I get butterflies, but I do it anyways. And that's from working out. Working out was the number one thing. Another thing is just 
try something new. Put yourself in new situations and get used to like being a fool and looking like a fool. I think if you stick in your lane and you only do things you're good at, but you don't really try something new, I think there's some humility to be experienced by failing, looking like a fool, trying something new and being bad at it. I think being a beginner and being a novice at something while someone else is an expert really humbles you because you realize, hey, I'm not as good as that person. So for example, I started uh, go-kart racing, right? And when I first went there, I sucked. I was getting shitted on by 14 year olds on the track. People were making fun of me for being an old, slow man. And it's kind of humiliating making being made fun of these 14 year olds. I'm like, yo, I don't put myself in this situation, but you show up time and time again, you become more competent. There's room for improvement and you do see it. So I think trying something new. Number two, expand your friend group and go outside. I'm gonna say this for Asian men specifically. Hey, Asian men in the culture we, we grew up in, we love our video games, anime, and we're kind of like introverts. We like to stay within like our realm. We're used to familiarity and comfort. Think about it, most Asians hang out. We only hang out with like Asians. For me, I actually, it's kind of a different story. I grew up in Colorado, not too many Asians, so most of my friends were black and white. I didn't grow up around a lot of Asians, but through observation as an Asian male, I do see the contrast. Typically, Asian men only hang out with Asians. They go to all these like bubble places as a group. There's like safety and security of numbers, which is completely fine. But the thing is, who are you outside of that group? And this doesn't even apply to Asian men anymore. Who are you outside of your friend group? If you go shopping together, eating together, working out together, partying together, who are you outside? Are you an individual or are you a follower? Find out what that means to be alone. Go to your dentist appointments alone. Do whatever and just talk to people. Learn what it means to stand on your own two feet. And it's gonna be scary. Most people find security in just being complacent in what's true. But go out and start doing things alone. Learn to fail and own up to your mistake. Go for freedom. Everyone wants freedom, but no one wants responsibility. With freedom comes great responsibility because you're responsible for your own fuck ups, right? So I'm not telling you to go out and fuck up, but go for what you want and learn to stand on your own two feet and deal with the consequences. Things will not be pretty. Things will not be pretty. And doing challenging things, you become stronger. You know you can survive the hardships and adversity, which kind of, you know, it's a feedback cycle of the belief in yourself. I think. The easy example was I moved from Denver in the West Coast, California to Maryland. Didn't know a single soul, got a new job during the peak of the pandemic. Didn't know a single person. Everything was locked down. I was like 2000 miles away from home, different time zone. I didn't live in the greatest area at the time. I had no friends. I went to this new job role where it was extremely challenging and vigorous. I didn't really know what I was doing, right? And it was so challenging. You go to work, you come home, you're alone, you don't have friends, you eat dinner, you go for walks, you're kind of in this really sketchy area. You're like, what the hell did I do? Like, what situation I just get myself into? You're like, you feel like a complete failure and you're so uncomfortable. I remember being so uncomfortable during my move out here. Nothing is stable, everything's new. How do you be confident within that? But slowly over time, I got used to being unfamiliar with this and I got comfortable with the pain, which inherently made me more confident over time. The only thing that was missing is time. Confidence builds with time, but you can't just sit there and be passive. You have to actively challenge yourself, put yourself in new situations to become better. And I think by becoming confident on a core level, you can go for the external things and superficial things that society cares about. For example, like when you're, confident in yourself, you can go buy materialistic items to kind of boost that confidence. For example, if you go and work out, you're gonna look pretty damn good. Go and buy clothes that fit you guys. Get a great haircut, take care of your face, shave, shampoo, condition, floss, brush your teeth, right? Go get a massage, go get a pedicure, do whatever you need to do. You don't have to go to the extent, but learn to take care of yourself because people who love themselves are inherently confident and they like to pamper themselves. I think that's okay. So I think with this confidence, you can, you can kind of take it two different ways. I think talking and meeting women when you're more confident is way more easy because rejection is better than regret and getting rejection in your face hurts less because you know who you are. I'm not saying you're gonna stand there and feel bulletproof, but you realize like, hey, this kind of stings, I got rejected. Rejection always hurts. But I was like, I don't know this person and I'm really thankful because I know what I have to offer and value. I know exactly what I have to offer. I'm this very confident, smart, well-spoken Asian that makes really good money and I work out, I look pretty damn great. And her rejecting me is like, hey, maybe we're not compatible or hey, maybe I can improve in certain areas of my life to become just 1% better for that next person. And it's having this belief genuinely helps you because if you have great friends, great relationships, you do really good at work, right? So it's like one area of your life starts lacking, start working in that area and everything else will follow.
but it's that core belief that no matter what happens, you will be okay. You will be okay. When everything's going perfect, smooth sailing, of course you can have confidence, but is that fake confidence? What's true confidence? Standing in the face of adversity on your two feet saying, hey, fuck, I might make mistakes, but through the storm, this will pass. I'll weather the storm and I'll ride the ship to the end and I'll be okay. And that's of my own accord. Super okay, guys. So I think if you're an Asian male struggling with confidence, two things I would just recommend. Get outside of your comfort zone. Go for a walk, go to a new coffee shop, start doing things alone. Venture out. You don't have to go jump and move across the country like I did, but go out and meet a new friend. Go out to a new store, go to a bar alone, go to a concert alone. Scary, right? Number two, start working out, guys. Asian brothers, come on, let's start lifting, let's get yoked, let's break the stereotypes. If you're another race, go hell yeah, start fucking working out, let's destroy these stereotypes, right? Be the anomaly, be there, be the role model for the next generation. Because I promise to you, if you were a younger version of yourself and you saw who you were today, you would be an inspiration. And I think having the younger generation see a confidence Asian male changes everything. Cause he's like, wait, these stereotypes that exist don't apply because he's the exception. And by becoming the exception, you become extraordinary, which inherently becomes ordinary. Because you realize if he's able to do it, I can do it. And having one more person does it defeats these stereotypes. So guys, chin up, stay strong, be there for yourself and be there for others. Realize that your actions don't impact yourself but impacts the next generation because they're gonna naturally follow you. And society will recognize your value one day. I'm not gonna say they're gonna recognize what we're doing early on. We might deal with a lot of backlash and hate, and that's okay, I'm willing to deal with that. We're willing to deal with that. But what's the other option, guys? Let's change now, it starts today. It's 2022, it's only gonna get better. Things are better than they were 10 years ago, slightly. Things aren't perfect. I don't think anything will ever be perfect. I don't think we'll ever live in this utopia where there's no racism against Asian male and Asian men don't have it hard in dating. No, I think that will be the case for a very long time. That sucks to say, but we can make it that much better by being that example. Shit's gonna be hard, guys. Let's rely on each other and the strength in numbers. As always, I wish you guys the best. Namaste.